How's it going, guys? So I wanted to do a little video here about Peacock and the WWE section or network. And they don't really obviously call it the network anymore here in the U.S. But uh, it's been almost a year. Uh, in April, you know, it's going to be like a full year. It was uh, WrestleMania last year where they had us switch over to Peacock. The network died here in the U.S. And, you know, it was time to switch over. And there was quite a concern about this. And now we see it's quite justified. Because a year later, uh, Peacock's WWE section is really nothing like WWE's network. Uh, it was so much better when it was on there. It, it, they really had a good thing going. As as bad as a WWE product might be, the network was a, a great place where you could just go on there and easily access what you wanted to. There wasn't much stress involved. There was uh, just a, a good layout. It was a good system. It took a while to get there. It took forever to get all the content on there, but it was great once it was all there. And well, some of the content never really made on there. And that's what we're going to discuss. I'm going to talk about the most annoying things about Peacock. And some of these things are, uh, you know, justifiably um not really peacock's fault because this this some of this stuff is from the network but you know they could improve these things you know if they're going to rent out the content from wwe and you've got a big ass corporation like nbc universal which is much bigger than world wrestling entertainment uh you would think that maybe it could you know maybe be better you know but for some reason uh, WWE's standalone streaming service was superior to the almighty Peacock, which is just inexcusable. It just it doesn't make any sense to me at all. So we're going to um go over here to actually Peacock, and I'm going to show you the stuff that I don't like. Uh, and that's going to be the, the first thing is the, the search feature, which is just really bad here. So... As you can see, I'm looking for, for Backlash, and it will take me to Backlash. But here, you know, if you haven't seen it, this is the WWE section on Peacock. And, you know, everything that was on the network is pretty much here. But if you want to look for something, for example, you want WrestleMania, here's WrestleMania. And you've got everything that has WrestleMania in the name. But, oh, you know what? Maybe I want to see WrestleMania 3. No, can't do that. Well, maybe it's because it was with Roman numerals. Nope, no results were found. See, you can't do it. Now, you know, what if you want to do, uh, you know, Backlash 2003? Will that come up? No. See, nothing here. Now, uh, maybe you want to watch the, um, the Jeff Hardy documentary. Will that come up? Let's see. Yeah, that one, see, that will come up as long as it's in the name. Let's see about the Randy Orton one. Will that come up? See, yeah, so documentaries are a different story. That will definitely come up in there. But if you want to see, like, a specific show or you want to see a match from Jeff Hardy, yeah, it, it, you're, you're not going to get it. You're just not, look, Jeff Hardy match. Nope. Super bad. Why, you know, like, why is this stuff even coming up? Is this even related in some way? No, it's not. So as you can see, that's really, really disappointing, uh, to say the least. Now, you might be saying, okay, well, here's WrestleMania. All right, so let's have a look at it. And I've talked about this, I think, when it first uh, came out. Look how this is separated into seasons. This is very inconvenient because unless you've got it, like, memorized... This is maybe not the best example. I mean, at least, you know, you could match it up. Okay, so season 30 must be WrestleMania 30, and sure enough, it is. But, you know, when it gets really bad, it's like, let's take something like Judgment Day, a, a classic WWE pay-per-view that's since been retired. Okay, here's Judgment Day, and, you know, Judgment Day wasn't always, like, a very consistent pay-per-view. Let's take a look here. We've got season one. Judgment Day, 1998. Remember this one? Then, they didn't have it in 1999. 
So season two is going to be Judgment Day 2000. Wow, isn't that just fucking fantastic? You got to like have this memorized. Like season three is actually uh, 2000 and, uh, 2001, 2000. This is not a good system, and we've been like this for about an entire year already. It is time to end it. Uh, th this is just, it's pathetic. Can't they do better than this? Uh, I mean, this is going to be the worst system ever. And you go into a pay-per-view, and there's no match markers. I mean, it's just like, look, uh, Judgment Day 2009. Just to give you an example. here, Here's Judgment Day. Th this is it, basically. You've got this whole bar here. And you'll go through it, and look, you don't know where you're going here. You can't even find the match. You're just, you're just going in blind. You got to go on Wikipedia. You got to look up the matches on the show and go from there. That, that to me, that's just inexcusable. This is bad. It's, it's not a good system at all. So you don't, you can't search for anything. You can't find anything, even when you click on it. It's just a bad system. I mean, it, it goes without saying. So I, I took a few notes also here on other things that really have been pissing me off over time about Peacock, and I'm going to tell you. So no, so no dedicated search feature, no match markers, separated by seasons. This is we went through these already. Uh, Goldberg's music. Now this is kind of a minor concern, but in a way. It kind of isn't, and I'll explain why. I've said this in some random review from what I remember, uh, either like a SmackDown or Raw review where Goldberg was on there. Goldberg's music, when he came to WWE, he started off with the Invasion music, at, which is a production theme um, that was licensed out to WCW. He came to the WWE, they licensed Invasion again for Goldberg. But then, you know, Jim Johnson, like he does a lot of times, to get around the licensing, they just, they wrote a theme. Sometimes they would write a theme that sounded a lot like the the production theme. And you, you'd see this, this is, uh, quite frankly, it happens quite a bit. They'll, they'll do this on a number of occasions. Like, just something off the top of my head I could think of, like, Matt Stryker's music. He had a production theme. So Jim Johnson kind of, you know, moved a few notes around and kind of changed up uh, how it sounded a bit, where it sounded pretty similar, but this, but Goldberg had a theme, and this theme was pretty epic. I'm actually going to say that I enjoyed Jim Johnson's theme better for Goldberg that he made versus the production theme. It just, I don't know, it sounded a bit more epic, a little bit better than me, but I think the majority probably enjoyed the um, the WCW Invasion production theme better. So, you know, that's good. Fine. Go watch WCW then. And the funny thing is, they actually started off dubbing in Jim Johnston's theme when, when, uh, when the network first came out. And so, you, you know, you would watch... Uh, Hulk Hogan and Goldberg battling it out on Nitro for the championship, and Goldberg would come out to his uh, his WWE theme. Okay, because they don't want to pay the money for the W for the production theme. Okay, but I I believe it's when Goldberg returned in 2016. Uh, remember he came back for the match at Survivor Series with Brock Lesnar. He came back with the pro the production theme again, Invasion. And they were like, okay, we're going to license it out. So what did these idiots do? What did these absolute numbskulls do? They go on to the fucking network and every single time Goldberg came out... And I actually didn't even notice this for a while because I just wasn't watching the pay-per-views that had Goldberg on them for a time. But I go and I'm and I'm watching uh, Armageddon 2003 where we've got uh, Goldberg wrestling. He comes out and I know at this time that his theme has been switched over and, and he's using the Jim Johnson theme at this time. Because at this time, I, I remember even going to a house show at MSG right before WrestleMania 20 and, and hearing his music from Jim Johnson. I'll, I'll never forget hearing that epic theme in person and later hearing it live in person at WrestleMania 20 when he left the company. And 
they dubbed in his fucking production theme where he didn't have it. And if you know how it sounds when people's themes are dubbed in, like the Sandman on the ECW pay-per-views and shows, there's no way that they could get the accurate crowd noise. Uh, they, they do manage to impressively get the commentary in there, and sometimes the ring announcer can be a bit obscured as well at times. But they downright fucked up the audio where it could have been avoided, where they didn't have to pay a dime because they own Jim Johnston's music. They don't have to license out the music. They have to actually pay for the invasion theme. But they're actually paying to dub something in that sounds worse. Now, it doesn't matter which theme you like better. Why would you destroy the crowd noise of all of Goldberg's appearances uh, just so you can get that WCW theme in there because you feel now that you probably should have licensed out that song in the first place. For you know, people like me, I, I like the I like the Jim Johnston theme, and I'm sure other people do too. Uh, so I I don't get why they purposely fuck it up like this, but that's something they chose to do somewhere along the way, and I think it was probably when he returned. Uh, Taker's music for American Badass, I mean, this has been there pretty much since they, they put Taker's matches when he had this theme from, from Kid Rock, and, uh, you know, to me, I, I like, I like You're Gonna Pay, I do, you know, I do like this composition for Taker, but, you know, this was like after he had a few themes already, you know, every year they would change his theme to something else. And after a while, they were like, you know, all right, well, Jim, you you write a theme for Taker. You know, we're not going li to keep licensing out American Badass and Limbiscuits rolling. And now those songs are a few years old already, so we want something new. Understandable. So, you know, but there was something about this era of Taker coming out in 2000 when he, he returned to Judgment Day. Some, you know, hearing th this, and it's always the same crowd pattern on every single uh episode of raw and smackdown and he appears on you know you you hear that that noise and it, it, it never changes or gets louder or gets lowered or anything it's just you hear the most generic noise and it sounds like you're playing a wwe 2k game where they have like the recorded the recorded crowd noise but you know it's like not really like used in the most effective ways possible, and you, you you've got like a noisy crowd, but it always sounds like the same crowd, and it's it's so bad. I I understand they couldn't reach an agreement with Kid Rock for some fucking reason. They I mean I'm very happy that when he does start using Roland that they did decide to, you know, license that song out. I'll tell you something, nothing pisses me more off than, than, than copyright stuff. It just, it fucks up so much shit. It, it, and it's just, it's ridiculous. I mean, this is archived content. Does it really matter that a 20-something-year-old song is playing? Well, apparently it does in the eyes of the law. I, I get that. You know, we're just complaining about an old wrestling show. But to me, it's just... It's so pathetic that you're forcing a company to go back and edit shit just because a song is playing in the background. Like, Jesus Christ, it, it's just, it's ridiculous. This is the same thing when it comes to, like, video games and movie footage and fair use. I mean, yeah, like, isn't that fair use? I, I guess not, right? I mean, it's only gotten worse over time. People are just, it's its so much greed from the record label. And, you know, it's not the fault of the artists, it's the record label. They they want the money. Uh, you know, it's like with Warner Brothers Music Group on YouTube. If you even put any bit, I'll never forget on YouTube when you had WMA just copywriting whole, a bunch of fucking shit. It was ridiculous. Um... Yeah, the Warner Brothers music, uh, oh, WMG, what it was, and they just, like, just went completely overboard copywriting everything. So, yeah, it's disappointing to hear. Uh, the weird censorship. So, we all know about the obvious censorship 
about the nation parody that DX did. You know, okay, you could easily go find that on YouTube or every, everything, you know, because now it's on Peacock. It's got to be super politically incorrect. Now, some of the stuff I have watched, they have left in that could be deemed offensive by SJWs and, and you know, stuff that's politically incorrect by today's standards. So uh, it, at least they didn't do that now anyway. But, you know, I, I did notice things where... I, I couldn't quite tell what was edited out. Like, I'm re I'm watching WrestleMania 2000. This is probably the best example I've seen so far. I'm watching, and they're continuously fading in and out. Like, I'm, I'm watching, like, the Hardcore Battle Royal in that pay-per-view, and they're fading in and out. Like, I'm like, well, what is it? Did the, someone in the crowd say something? Was there a sign that was visible at that moment that they didn't want you to see? I, like, it just was like, what happened? I almost thought something was wrong. I rewound it. I did like the 10 seconds back rewind and saw that it was the same exact thing. So it wasn't a problem with my phone and it wasn't a problem with Peacock. This is just what Peacock decided to do. And another weird edit that I noticed was, uh, this is from late 99 on SmackDown. Uh, where you had, remember we had the fake mankind, uh, and he, he was doing a skit with Triple H, and then you have Mick Foley captures this guy, he like holds him hostage in the locker room, and what he does is he goes up and, and he, you know, he says some sexual stuff to Tori, and he says that he's going to be in his locker room. Well, later on in this episode, uh, I remember watching this when it was on the WWE Network. Kane came in there. He sees the fake mankind dressed as, uh, you know, dressed up in the Mick Foley. And he thinks that that's mankind, so he beats the shit out of him. For some reason, they removed that. And I don't know why. I was, like, saying to myself, why was that removed? But what was offensive about that? And it's it's kind of weird because you see... You know, Mick Foley goes up to Tori, he has this discussion, and uh, she she goes to tell Kane, and, and then nothing happens after that. And if you're watching this for the first time, you're saying, like, well, why didn't they follow up on that? And, and, and it almost makes it look like today's show, where they don't follow up on everything. So I, I thought, like, that was kind of bizarre, to say the least, why that was missing. But yeah, you'll see this on a number of occasions. There's some weird edits... I was watching a Raw, you know, just uh, recently where it just weirdly kind of edits out. Um, yeah, you'll see it if, if you go through enough episodes. It's not that common, but it, it's more common than it should be. And it's very jarring when it does happen, especially with the fade outs. Um, and the copyright bonanza, uh, as I wrote it down here, is basically any fucking musical performance that they do. Uh, it, it is like edited out, except um, Motorhead, uh, Limbiscuit, I still believe is at WrestleMania 19. But uh, once again, Kid Rock performed on, um, uh, on on an episode of Raw. It's the same episode where Joe C interferes in Edge and Christian's match uh, and costs them the titles to to Too Cool. Now, they do show Joe C, but you don't see Kid Rock, and you don't see that he was there with Kid Rock at the moment. So, you see all the stuff is set up. JR and King mention it, but there's no, uh, you know, there's no trace of Kid Rock at all. And that's pretty disappointing. Also, one of the most pathetic things, besides actual musical guests missing, is, for, first of all, the Insane Clown Posse. There's no trace of them. They're, they're completely gone. So anything you watch with the eye of these is completely butchered because they're not there. So, you know, they, they're not there for SummerSlam 98. They're not there for any episode of Raw they may have appeared on. But some of the most pathetic examples is wrestlers singing songs that are licensed. And for some reason, this is now considered in this day and age... And it's the same thing when you see... They're not even playing the music. It's not even a karaoke track. The Rock and Stone Cold on Raw... What? And I'm not even... There's not no hyperbole. This is one of my favorite promos of all time. When they sing Margaritaville. 
But, oh, this is a Jimmy Buffett song, so guess what? It, it, it can't be archived on the network. So stupid. And also, the rock concert where he, you know, uses different lyrics from different, like, licensed songs that are in the same melody. No, that, that's got to go, too. We can't have that. I, I, I'm just like, holy shit. <laughs> like, is this how bad copyright law has gotten? It, it, it's it's almost, it's, it's insane. It, it ruins art at this point because these were such good performances and such good scenes on these shows that you've just, you completely fucking butchered the show. For example, that episode of Raw, you, you destroyed one of the greatest moments to me. Watching that as a young teenager was such a, a great promo for me. I was laughing hysterically. It's such a great performance. You see the range of the characters, Stone Cold and The Rock and their element, having fun, doing their characters, and it's gone. They just... they just it, Now, it is a pretty neat edit that they did on there, I will say. They edited it out on the right camera angle where you really can't tell it's missing. But if you're a longtime fan like me who has seen this skit uh, numerous times and watched it again on YouTube, you're going to be looking at this shit and be like, like, what the fuck happened? This was so good. And now it's gone. And same thing goes for the rock concerts. Like, you, you just edited that stuff out. And it's crazy that, that they did this. Like, I don't know. It, to me, it's a little bit, like, disturbing to say the least that, like, all this stuff... If there's any hint of any licensed shit in there, nope, it's got to go. And they forgot about heat and velocity. Uh, they started doing heat, and they got they got pretty far with it. They went to 1999, and then they stopped. Like, midway through 1999, I'm like, are they going to continue? But, like, what is it? Is it, like, too much of an effort for them to, like, get this out? Uh, and also velocity... They only gave us eight episodes of that, and, you know, even less people watch Velocity than Heat, so I, I kind of get it. There's a limited market for people who want to see that, but chances are, if you're, like, big into the network and big into just WWE programming and you're subscribing to this stuff, you're 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 probably going to want to see that stuff. And, you know, I, I know that I do. There, there was a lot of good moments on Heat. Maybe not the most memorable ones, but, you know, stuff that I remember that I want to go back and watch. And there were certain, like, mid-carters that I enjoyed. Like, I want to go back and watch certain Raven matches and, like, you know, just different matches on there. And uh, you just can't do that for some reason. It's uh, it's kind of disappointing. And it seems like they're, they're not going to do it anytime soon. And it doesn't look like you're really... Uh, there, there's also less frequency of cool shit being added to Peacock. Like once in a while, I'll add a little something here and there. But I'm I'm seeing like stuff on there, like certain like indie promotions that they've like added on there that I have no interest in watching. It's like weird, you know. And the stuff that is really good, like Root to Aggression, we, you we had to wait two fucking years. For, for new episodes on that. And that to me was unacceptable. Be, because we only got like, uh, what was it? Five episodes, which, which is just pathetic. So you're telling me over a two year span, they could only do ten, 10 episodes. And some of these episodes were only like 30 something minutes. I don't know. Anyway, is there anything else that you guys could think of? Let me know down in the comments below. The, the, those were my gripes. I, I kind of wanted to get them out there and make a video on it. I'm sure a lot of people probably agree with this stuff. You might have not known some of this stuff. So, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bells to get all the notifications when I post all my new videos. If you're not getting the notifications, please come directly to the channel to check out to see if there's anything that you might have missed. And I want to thank all my patrons for your continued support, and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.